Big day today for UTEP, class of 2015, 22 players for the minors. And I'm here right now with uh, head coach Sean Kugler. Once again, when we first uh, met you as head coach, you said you were going to build this thing on the lines up front. And you did it again this time around of the 22 players, five on the offensive line, five on the defensive line. Yeah, and that'll continue to be the process until our numbers are, are complete at those positions. But we really feel you win the game on both the offense and defensive lines. Uh, we were looking to upgrade some size and physicality at those positions, and, and we've done that for really the third year in a row. And uh, we'll continue to do that. That's, that's where the game's won. A lot of quality players in this year's class. Uh, the one name that really sticks out, though, N.J. McFarlane, guy that played at the University of Texas, uh, one of the best uh, high school players to come out of El Paso. And you get uh, to enjoy one year of McFarlane here at UTEP. Well, that, that'll be enjoyable for both of us because uh, he's a great kid, great character kid. I'm excited about having him in our program, and I think it's going to be good for him to be uh, a part of an offense that features a tight end, and we're going to give him those opportunities. Is he somebody that can also line out on the outside and even though he plays tight end, almost utilize that dual threat as a wide receiver? Yeah, we'll evaluate him throughout the spring, but just what, from what I've seen on film, I think he could be a guy that could be an online guy, he could be a move guy, and, and certainly be playing out in the slot too. So uh, he's got a lot of ability. Something else we noticed uh, with this year's class is uh, a lot of El Paso kids part of it again. You've always said that if you've got uh, a lot of talent and you've got Division One potential, you will offer this uh, these kids uh, a scholarship, and, and you've done that once again with uh, quite a few El Paso kids. Well, we got five kids, uh, you know, out of 22 that are from El Paso, and and you know, realistically, we wanted more, but you're not going to get all of them, and we're going to do our best to recruit those guys. And uh, some chose to go elsewhere, and I wish them luck. But again, it all starts our recruiting process starts right here in El Paso. And something else you just mentioned right now is that if you don't stay here, then you wish them the best, but you go after everybody. You're, if, I guess in the perfect world, you keep every single college, uh, you know, potential college football player from El Paso right here in town. We would love to. And, uh, you know, they got to be guys that fit into our program and fit the style of football we play, um, but also character-wise. But, uh, you know, we know what type of energy it brings the program. I just refer to the Jones twins, uh, what type of energy they brought to our fan base and our program and what great football players they are. So, uh, I, you know, because kids are from El Paso, to me, that's not a knock. I think El Paso football has gotten much better uh, since my last stint here as an, as an assistant coach. So there's a lot of quality players here. There's a lot of quality coaches, and, uh, and it's, it's our first stop in recruiting. How nerve-wracking is uh, the last day or two before uh, signing you know, day is here and, and the letters are coming in? Uh, is it still you – know, do you sweat it out a little bit, just making sure that uh, these commits are, are going to uh, sign on the dotted line? You do because, you know, you're dealing with 17-year-old – kids for the most part and uh, you can't have them on campus you can't go there so uh, the last time you see them is usually on their visit uh, you can call them uh, but there's other coaches calling them too so you never know what's going through a kid's mind uh, all the kids that we wanted to sign in this class uh, we signed so it was very productive in that area and uh, Again, you know, there's always that uneasiness until that name comes across the fax machine. Yeah, but when you're batting close to 1,000, like you just mentioned, that, that's that got to be huge because the goal is everybody that you want, you get. And if you're able to, to accomplish that, it's got to be a great class. Yeah, we went right off our board, and, you know, we rank them one through four or five, whatever the prospect list is. And, and we got our top one or two at pretty much every position. And, you know, some of those guys chose to go to other schools. And, again, I wish those guys luck, uh, you know, they're the type of young men we were recruiting in the first place, so we certainly don't have any animosity if they choose elsewhere. You brought Kavika on board from Las Cruces at, at quarterback. He's the only quarterback you signed in this class. He's a hell of an athlete and just can do a lot of different things. But as far as his future goes, do you see it to under center here at UTEP? Oh, yeah, he's going to be a quarterback. And, again, you mentioned he can do a lot of things, and I'm a big believer in the more you can do, the better you're going to help the program. So uh, the thing I love about him is his energy and, and what he brings to the table as a quarterback. He's got great intangibles. He's got leadership qualities, and uh, you know he's the type of kid you're around and you're drawn to him. You just released the schedule earlier in the week prior to uh, signing day. Five home games. You start out with uh, Arkansas and Tech before uh, you get New Mexico State. So not an easy schedule, but you probably wouldn't have it any other way knowing that you test a team like this right off the bat and see what they're made of. You know, you can't whine about it. You know, I wish we had six home games. I wish we didn't start three in a row, but I also wish I had a full head of hair. So, uh, you know, whining about it ain't going to help the situation. We just got to prepare ourselves mentally. That we're going to go on the road for those first three weeks. And, uh, and that, that third week really is a game that's very attainable for the minor fans being just up the road in Las Cruces. Do you get any downtime now that signing day is over before spring ball starts? Yeah, the coaches will have uh, the rest of the weekend off, and, and much deservedly so because they've been on the road pretty much away from their families for a full month. 
Is Mrs. Kugler looking forward to a date night with her husband uh, here later? Sure, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> there it is, another successful recruiting class for the UTEP football team. Uh, for With Coach Sean Kugler, I'm Steve Kaplow. It's Team 600, it's ESPN El Paso.